Welcome back to another procedural content generation tutorial for Godot 3.0. In this installment, we're going to be looking at making random dungeons. For this demo, our goal is to generate a random dungeon, like the one pictured here. And for our purposes, a, a dungeon is a series of rooms connected by corridors that the player can wander around and explore. And maybe there's things in the room, maybe there's not. We're not going to worry about that at the moment. We want to generate this layout, this random layout of rooms and corridors. Now, there's a lot of different ways to go about this. And there's a lot of different popular algorithms for generating dungeons. This is something people have been doing for a long time. Some popular ones are to generate the rooms in different locations and then use maze generation, like we've done before, to generate the corridors between them. But for this demo, I want to try something a little different. Uh, for this algorithm, we're going to take advantage of Godot's built-in physics engine to create the map. Broadly speaking, we're going to split it up into three steps. First, we generate the rooms. Then we find a path that connects the rooms together, generate the corridors along that path. And then we turn it into a tile map that will be walls and open spaces that a player can actually walk around on and explore. So we're going to start with the room. A room in this context is a rectangular space uh, large enough for the player to walk around in and that can contain objects of interest like treasures or mobs or whatever else you might be populating your dungeon with. So we're going to use a rigid body 2D to represent the room. And this is where the physics comes in. So we're going to start by making a an individual room object that we can instance a bunch of to create our dungeon. So here's the node layout. We have a rigid body 2D for the room and a collision shape 2D, which I have not added a shape to yet. We're going to do that in a script so that we can randomize it. So let's attach a script to the room. OK, so this script is going to we have a size variable to keep track of the size of our room. And then we're going to make a function called make room where we give it a position and a desired size. And that's going to create the collision shape, basically. So we set our position equal to the given position, size equal to the given size, and we create a rectangle shape 2D that's going to have its extents set to the size, and we attach that to the collision shape 2D. And that's our script to generate a room. The other things we need to do are in the project settings, we need to make sure we set in the physics 2D section, the default gravity to zero. I don't want the rooms falling off the screen. And for the room itself, we're going to set the mode to character. And a rigid body 2D in character mode can't rotate. So for this dungeon, we want to keep our rooms orthogonal. So this will keep them from rotating if they, as they collide with each other. So now let's add a main scene that's going to generate our actual dungeon. We're going to start with a node 2D. This is going to be my main scene. And I'm going to put a plain node in there called rooms that's going to act as a container to hold all the rooms that we generate. In the main scene script, we're going to load the room scene so that we can instance them. And then we're going to set up some config variables that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to have a tile size. This is going to be how big the tiles of our tile map that we generate will be. Uh, the number of rooms that we want to generate. Uh, we're going to have the minimum. Minimum size is the minimum number of tiles that a room's width or height can be. And max size will be the maximum. In our ready we want to call randomize to initialize the random number generator. And then we're going to call our make rooms function. And this is going to be the 
function that generates all of our rooms. So we have a loop. We're going to count to num rooms. That's how many rooms we want to generate. We are going to start out by setting them all to, we're going to just put them all at the center, or at 0, 0. We're going to set all the rooms to 0, 0 to begin with. We're going to make an instance of the room. And we're going to randomize the width and height. So for width, we want a random number between min size and max size. So we get that by saying, picking a random number, max size minus min size. So we pick a random number between 0 and 6, for example, and then add 4 to it. And then you have between 4 and 10. We're going to do that for both the width and the height. So now we have two random numbers. So we can now call make make room on the new room we made, pass it the position, and pass it our size. And our size is going to be that width and height times the tile size. And then we're going to add that room to the rooms container. All right, so now we've generated 50 random rooms. But if you were to run this, you would see nothing because these collision shapes don't have any visibility. Now we can test to see what's going on by turning on visible collision shapes. And if we run that, we'll see a bunch of squares are popping up and getting pushed apart. But we need to zoom out to be able to see the actual rooms and the whole layout. And we probably want to do some better visualization than the collision than just the collision shape debug, because we don't want to leave this on during uh, actual gameplay. So we can add a camera 2D to this scene, set the current to on, and we're going to set the zoom to 10 by 10. And that's going to zoom us out a bit. So that will help us see what's happening. So you can see when we run the rooms are all pushing each other apart so that there are no overlaps because that's what the physics engine does for us. So let's turn that debug back off and instead we're going to draw some outlines for the rooms so that we'll be able to see them. And we're going to do that using the draw function for a room in, so for each room we want to draw a rectangle of its size. So we'll use draw rect. And the rectangle that we're going to use is room, oops, room position minus room dot size, room dot size times two. That's the size of the rectangle. And we'll zoom in here so you guys can see. And we also want to use a color. I'm going to pick a greenish color here. And false, we don't want the rectangles filled in. And so that means that we just need to call this in our process function so that it will update the drawing. Now when we run the scene, we just see the outlines of the, of the rooms as they're generated. Let's also add an input function here so that, oops, let's get up here and give you some space, so that if we press the space bar, so is action press, that's UI select to, be, to start with. So if we press the space bar, I want to delete all the rooms and respawn them. So just to give us a quick way to restart. So we want to delete everything in the rooms container and then call make rooms again. All right, there we go. So now we can uh, respawn our rooms whenever we want by hitting the space bar and get a different collection of rooms. Okay, so this is looking good. But let's add a couple other things. We're going to add another variable here called h spread, horizontal spread. And what this 
means is how much we want the room layout to be biased to be horizontal. So like a lot of games, for example, if we were doing, if you're doing this to generate an isometric map, you might want the player to spend more time walking right and left than they do up and down. So you want the dungeon to be laid out more horizontally. So this horizontal spread is going to add some pixels to the position when the room is spawned. And so the bigger we make this number, the more spread out they'll be horizontally. So that just means that here, what we want to do is change the starting position so that the x has this value in it between h spread and h spread. And oops. and so that means that when we run it now, we'll have a more horizontally laid out dungeon. Okay. The other thing you might notice is that it takes a little time for those rooms to stop moving as they're overlapping. So we can influence that over here in our room script. When we spawn the shape, we're going to set custom solver bias to about 0.75. And you'll see if I run it, what that does is they're going to stop moving a little bit faster when they, they're going to reach their finish point a little more quickly. So next what we want to do is now that we've generated all these rooms, we want to delete or cull some of them. So I'm going to make a variable called cull here, and this is a percentage. So if I set it to 0.5, that means when you go through and cull, we're going to call about half of the rooms. So in make rooms, what we want to do is after we've added all of them, we're going to need to wait for the movement to stop, right? We need to give the physics engine a few seconds or a little bit of time to spread the rooms out and get them to stop moving. So we can use yield and just make a quick uh, timer. I'm going to do it for 1.1 seconds and you can adjust this based on you know how you want it to work. We're mainly doing this because we want to be able to watch the rooms spread out. Um, and then we're going to we're going to call the rooms after this. And calling the rooms means we go through each room and possibly delete it. So for each room in the rooms container We're going to pick a random number, and if that random number is less than the call number, we're going to delete the room. Um, we can also, if we didn't, then we're going to set the room's mode to rigidbody2d.mode static. Mode static will turn this and turn that rigid body 2D into a static body. So it means it's not going to move anymore or have any collision physics happening because we're done with that. So now when we run it, what we're going to see is that our rooms are going to spread out and then some of them are going to disappear to give us a little more sparsely populated dungeon. And again, you can adjust now these numbers to give you all sorts of different layouts depending on what kind of dungeon you're going for. All right, so that's a good start to our dungeon generator. We've got our rooms being generated. Uh, we're going to stop here, and in the next installment, we're going to look at how we connect these rooms together, uh, generating a path between them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.